And this fool jumps out of the van going 15 miles an hour. What's up, everybody? Shout out to all the law abiding criminals out there. As always, you know what to do. You can subscribe. You can hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. I got all the prison stories, all the news, everything that you want to hear right on this channel. And today we're going to get into a little bit of story time. I know some of my most popular videos on this channel. Hold up. There we go. Activated, baby. Now we're ready. So some of my most popular videos on this channel have always been my stories. Uh, I had a hell of a ride in my life. Um, at 17 years old, I escaped from jail. Uh, been on a, a multi-state run from the U.S. Marshals. Just so much stuff happened to me in my life. And so, though, like I said, I've gotten a lot of views on some of those videos telling my story. And people have always said that I was a great storyteller. I've never really thought that I was. But hey, today, got one for you guys. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's dramatic and a little funny at the same time. But I'm going to take you back. The year is probably 2004, and to be honest, it's a little bit fuzzy. I can't really remember exactly when all this was, and I'm going to be vague on the details because obviously some things that I've done in life I never got busted for, and I'm sure that the statute of limitations has run out, but that's neither here nor there. I'm still going to keep it vague about people and things like that, but take it back to around 2004, and this is when my co-defendant, who did time in Florida, first told me about this whole check thing that I ended up going to the feds for. And for those that don't know, I had 10 years in the feds for possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, but also a conspiracy. We had uh, basically a counterfeit check operation, made a couple million dollars doing that. Um, and no, I did not get to keep any of it. I spent all of it. I was a dumbass, young, early 20s. Never had money in my life, so I blew through it all, and all my shit got repossessed or taken by the feds uh, forfeiture. So anyway... You know, my buddy came down to live with me where I was, and um, he had a job, I had a job, and we were both on the straight and narrow, but obviously, we had already done state time, and you know, we kind of had the, the criminal thing in us, and so inevitably, after a while, we start talking about how we can hit licks and how we can come up, make more money, and so he keeps telling me about this check thing, and I'm like, okay, tell me everything about it and basically he learned it from this guy who used to do uh cashier's checks and go buy jewelry and then he would take the jewelry and fence it off and sell it in other places so he tells me everything that he knows and even after he tells me i realize you know we're going to need a computer we're going to need a printer and all this stuff and you got to think this is back in 2004 yes they had computers and yes printers and all this stuff but still technology was way behind what it is today the internet was way behind what it is today so it wasn't like it is today you could just jump on and find out anything you want and be ready to rock and the technology today is just out of this world so even after he tells me all this stuff it, it still takes a month or so because we're going to need this equipment and so finally you know we're talking about it on the front porch of the house one day and i'm like man i'm tired of talking about this so let's just let's just go do it we're going to find us a place where we can go and we can get this equipment and so the first thing that came to my mind was places that sell mobile homes because they have offices on these lots where they sell mobile homes. And a lot of times they don't have alarms on them, especially where we were at the time, which is kind of in a country area. So I was like, dude, this would be the perfect spot that we can go. We can get the computer, the printer, everything. They got it all right there in one spot and it won't have an alarm. Easy money. So I got a girl that I'm talking to at the time. And this is whenever me and my wife was on one of our uh, hiatuses, I guess you could call it. Um, this is after I came home from state prison and I was very angry, had problems. I was trying to fight everybody, not my wife, but people out in public and everything. And she just didn't really know who I was. So she left. And so this girl that I was talking to at the time ended up kind of being my partner in crime as well. She caught the Fed case with me. And um, so she would be my person that would drive and be legal while me and my buddy were basically illegal because at, at one point we were actually running from U.S. Marshals. And so she would drive us around because she had the legitimate ID. So anyway, I pick a spot. OK, now this spot is kind of way out. It's on the outskirts of town, but it's still kind of, you know, populated around there. So I'm like, all right, this is where we're going to go. And this is what we're going to do. Now, at the time I had a van. I can't remember exactly what, which one it was because I've had two or three. 
I've had a Grand Caravan before. Uh, I had an Astro Van. So I don't remember which one it was, but I know we had the sliding door. Okay, so we wait till about midnight. It could have been later. I, like I said, I really can't remember. This is well over 10 years ago. So I tell them, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get in the van. We're going to go to this place. And the main highway is where this place was off of. So I'm like, what we're going to do, there's some woods right beside it. The best way to drop is it'll be about whatever, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, whatever time it was. So there's not going to be any traffic. So you can just slow down my driver, just slow down enough to slide that door open. And we're just going to jump out. You can just come down to about 5, 10 miles an hour. We'll jump out, run off into the woods, make sure everything's good. And then we'll continue to move into the place and do what we got to do. So <laughs> we're riding down the road. The girl starts slowing down, you know, 15 miles an hour, whatever it was. And she kind of goes off a little bit. So it's bumpy and it's loud because we've got the door open. So you've got the wind from that. And my buddy... I'm like, all right, you ready? So he gets up to the door and I can't remember exactly what I said, but I said something to her and he thought that I said, okay, go. And this fool jumps out of the van going 15 miles an hour. I look and somehow he ended up backwards. So the direction that we're facing his back is to that way. And I just remember seeing when his feet hit, it was like something out of a movie. He just hit and immediately went down and just started tumbling and rolling. I heard him screaming something. I didn't know what it was. I was like, oh, shit. So I just had her all the way come to a stop. I jump out. I run over to him. I'm like, are you all right? And he's like, yeah, man, I'm good. I'm good. I think the breath was knocked out of him or something. So I hollered at her. I said, go, go, go. Get off the road. Don't stay stopped. So the plan was there's two major roads where we are. There's the one we're on, and then a few hundred yards behind this place that we're at, there's another one. So after we hit this lake, we were going to cut through to that other road, and that's where she was going to pick us up at. So we get up, we get into the woods, and we start making our way through these woods, and we come around to the back side of this place. Now, these places are pretty well lit up. They've got a lot of lights out there. They like to keep their trailers and stuff on display all the time. So... We're creeping up through the back of this place. Now, that was issue number one that just went wrong this night was him jumping out and damn near dying because the van was still going too fast. So number two, man, we come creeping up through this place now, creep through the backside. And there's this one trailer in particular that we can go and catch cover behind. Now, mind you, at the time we had pistols. So we creep up to this trailer. And we're sitting behind it, crouched down, and we're just kind of chilling to make sure nothing has happened. Nobody's seen anything. No cops are coming to check it out or nothing like that. So we're crouched down, and suddenly I start seeing shadows on the ground down at the bottom, right by where we're crouched down at. And so I'm like, what the hell is that? And then I hear a sound, like a clanking sound. Needless to say, man, we are like on edge. So we got our guns out, and we're just tense the hell up waiting for somebody to come walking around that corner. And I don't even know what we were going to do, but we're just all tensed up and waiting. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, I recognize that sound. And finally, I realized after we damn near shit our pants, that it was a flagpole. The shadow was the flag whipping in the wind and casting a shadow on the ground. And the tinking was that little tinking of that metal piece hitting the pole. So man, after our heart rates finally came down and we got our damn heart out of our throat, we proceeded over to the office. Now, the office was like one of those small little double wides, I guess like a little two bedroom double wide. They converted it into an office. So we go behind it. It's facing the main highway. So when we're behind it, nobody can see us because we're surrounded by other trailers. And then, like I said, back behind us was nothing but woods until you broke through to the other side to get to the other highway where there was more businesses on that other road. So we pull this chair over to the window. We're going to make entry through the window. Now, I walk around to the end of this office trailer and I realize that there is an alarm thing up there, the bell. But I didn't think it was connected because I didn't see no wires going to it. So I was like, you know what? We'll take a chance. Even if they have an alarm, it's probably on the windows being open or the door being breached. If we just bust out the glass, they probably don't have any motion sensors in a place like this. There's not enough valuables in here to, you know, justify that cost. So my buddy, he's shorter than me and weighs a little bit less than me. So he gets up on the uh, chair and he goes to go in and I'm, I'm trying to get him boosted up. Well, when he puts his weight down on the chair, 
the chair splits. It was like one of those outdoor lawn chairs. It splits. He falls through and gets his leg hung. I think he had one leg up in the window. Um, I talked to him about this the other day, too, and he told me some details that I didn't remember. But either way, he gets half hung and I'm trying to get up on him and I'm trying to get him in there. So this is the other situation that was failing this night. I finally get up on him, get him boosted. He gets over and into the office. So I go over by the door. The plan was we agreed that he would go run through every single room. That way, if there was a motion detector, it would get triggered. We would know and we could just haul ass instead of just staying in there, getting both of us in there and then going room to room and triggering one and not knowing. So I'm over there waiting by the door. And like I said, all these things that have went wrong, it has got us both on edge like crazy palms sweating i mean it's just ridiculous so he does his little thing all of a sudden the back door opens i see him come out and he just jumps off the porch and takes off running and he says something to me and i'm like what and he says it again and i'm like what and for some reason i'm stuck on stupid just still standing there while he's running off he finally stops turns around and says run it's an alarm and i'm just like oh shit i felt my whole entire heart sink at the same time that all this is happening that outside alarm just went crazy so i take off behind him we bail through the woods you can hear this shit from miles it is the loudest thing i've ever heard in my freaking life so we get all through the woods we get back over there to the other road and we get to this one business, which is a big warehouse that we had already prearranged to meet her at. And we wait. She finally comes at the prearranged time. We jump in the van and tell her everything that happened. I'm like, oh, my God. So we go all the way down the end of this road. And I'm like, you know what? Nobody knows who we are. Nobody knows what's happened. Let's just ride back by there and see what's up. Maybe it didn't go to the police. Maybe it's just the sound. Let's just go see. So we hit that other road and start heading back down through there. And sure enough, there's two or three cops with their blue lights on sitting there. So that whole entire lick got spoiled. And needless to say, we were on hold again trying to put together this check thing. Now, we did eventually end up going into a very similar spot and being successful. But that is a story for another day. I was just sitting around. Thinking about all the things that I have done in my life, man, and I literally have a book, man, like a book of stories that I could tell like this, man. I've got stories of failed licks whenever I'm running down the side of a mountain with this same guy and we're literally about to die because the cardio is killing us. It's cold and I step into a lake. So that's another story for another day. But either way, man, that's one of my stories. That's crazy. And like I said, I got plenty more and I guess I'm just going to start telling them because I get demonetized on all of my videos that are related to prison. I'm still going to cover prison stuff, but uh, like I said, my stories are pretty popular on this channel and I hope you guys enjoyed it, man. There will be more coming soon. Until next time.